Uh, I think we're good to go. Oh. Yeah, like I'm, like I'm always so yeah, perfect. On here now. Hello. Hi. <laughs> hello, hello. <laughs> I'm here to party crash the recording. So we're talking about Azure Stack. <laughs> Welcome everyone to a new video of our Azure Stack Partner Solutions video series. Uh, I'm lucky again that I'm here with Tiberiu Radu from the Azure Stack Hub team, um, and he will introduce me to a new partner solution today. Uh, Tibi, how is it going and who I'm going to talk to today? Hello, Thomas. Hello, everyone. Uh, today we're going to talk with a uh, partner that actually started as a service provider and then they uh, transform that the, the solution that they built for themselves, they transform that into a managed um, service and a package that they off actually offer to other CSPs and other service providers. Um, Dodi will go through their journey and, and how they got here, as well as how they work with um, other service providers to enhance their solutions. Um, like uh, before, uh, in this uh, Azure Stack Hub uh, partner solution series, uh, we talk with partners, both with service providers as well as with enterprises, but also with ISVs that build solutions on top or beside the partner to uh, enhance, augment, and uh, help them accelerate their uh, adoption with their customers. Oh, that's awesome. No, I'm really looking forward to that. Uh, that sounds super interesting. So I will switch over to Dodi and talk to him today what he actually offers. Hey, welcome Dodi. Nice to meet you. I hope you're doing really well. Um, so we are going to talk about today about our Azure Stack Hub partner solutions. Uh, before we start, can you uh, introduce yourself a little bit and also your company? Sure. Thanks, Thomas. And thanks, TB. Uh, my name is Dori Mwido. I'm the CTO and co-founder of ITRA. And how we started actually is coming in from our parent company, who's a, what Tibis was mentioning, uh, a CSP. Back in 2011 though, I'm, our headquarters in Toronto, there's really no public clouds out here. So for us, it was really one of those early adopters trying to find ways and, and that's where our journey actually started. So we started playing around with, with cloud hosting side, different sites of, uh, of technologies out there. And then circle back around 2014, you know, AWS is coming prevalent. Then Microsoft Azure launched and, and all, all of a sudden you need to start looking at as a service provider, how do you capitalize that opportunity? As you all know, you will never actually be able to compete with some of these hyperscalers at that, at that small scale. So what we started doing is starting to say, hey, how can we complement that with the value? And that's when we started looking at a hybrid cloud solution. Um, with that journey that we've had and the environment that we're in, we were able to actually start looking for experimentations at that point. And we only have two choices really, it's either you win or you learn. So really for us, it's really that journey that made this happen. When we started looking at, hey, you know what? It's now making some sort of gains with our, our CSP, adding managed services on top. Started looking at that in 2016, and it started hitting on the scalability side because we're still in that virtual appliance. So here comes Docker, came in, and we started saying, you know what? We need to start investing on modernizing those th that application. Circle back 2016, we were able to modernize into a microservice stack so that we can deploy that in any public clouds like Microsoft Azure or even on-prem. But the real value for this, having that journey, is we're able to create a product not only for innovating and providing that IP on the platform, but really um, giving our journey and our expertise to any of the CSPs out there. So 2018 is when we start deciding to actually productize this. We had two paths. Either we started using it full on with Iveda, and currently Iveda is a direct CSP today. And we're actually doing, we're, we're launching some of our US and Mexico CSP registration, registrations as well, and starting to actually uh, grow in that direction. But in terms of ITRA, the product, we started launching it and what we're looking for is we looked for about 10 direct CSPs that are willing to 
invest the time and work with us. Uh, that that's around 2019, which is just last year. And look what happened to the COVID at 2020. It's almost like skipping that 2020 year and just saying, hey, where's 2021? So for us, it was really a, a journey because really 2019 and then going to 2020, um, I was actually with Tibi, had the privilege to go in Singapore in 2019 um, in front of like, I, I would say 30 CSPs there. And Tibi is saying, you know what, it will be great to share what you have. So one of the reasons why we called it ITRA, it's because it's a Sanskrit word for journey. So Yatra is a Sanskrit word for journey. And so we always think that every single CSP is no matter what level, it starts with a journey. And that's basically how we started. Oh, that sounds awesome. Now, I love the part where you said uh, you win or you learn. Um, and I love like what you're doing. You made this journey, right? You are on this journey and you're helping others going on that journey as well and improving their their way there as well. Um, speaking about like, again, you mentioned uh, CSPs and service providers and like their environment. Um, what kind of clients do you work with? Like, what is the typical client you're working with uh, in that case? Yeah, so it, it has uh, multiple ranges. Um, a lot of the, the main use cases basically is for clients where the public cloud Azure is, in that, is not in that region. And they actually wanted to become a, a cloud provider in that region side. So what they usually do is they, they created a, their own Azure Stack Hub region sites in there so that it can complement Azure and Azure Stack as a hybrid. So basically it ranges from some regional telcos, it ranges from, from some large CSPs out there. And then there's some data center, tier two data center guys that are now looking at, hey, you know what? We're, we're stuck with virtualization. We're stuck with managed hardware. How can we actually create operational efficiencies by adopting this type of architecture and getting ready for the edge play as well, right? And I know you guys have that Azure Stack Edge as well. Um, one side note to that is we are working with a healthcare service provider that basically, you know, when that COVID thing happened, and they're doing some innovations by creating those sort of a, a pods where you can just put a pod anywhere in the world and have an instant healthcare. So with that, we started looking at um, uh, Edge, uh, Azure Stack Edge in this case, and that's going to be on, on the future side. But mainly for the, the Azure Stack side, it, it really does range for telcos and tier two data centers. Okay. No, it's super interesting. I, I love that. I worked a lot with service providers uh, in, in the past, uh, and I just love that business, and I, I really like these, these scenarios. So you brought up hybrid, obviously, uh, and, and the intelligent edge and so on. Um, my question here would be, why did you choose Azure Stack Hub, and how does it fit in your overall hybrid environment or solution in that case? Um, why did you pick Azure Stack Hub? That's a great question, Thomas. Actually, when we started looking at it, we looked at it um, on two types. We looked at it on the technical side of things, and we looked at it on the business perspective. So when we started looking at direct CSPs and CSPs out there, we started looking at why is it such a, a vibrant community for Microsoft? Um, it's because it's always been like that. They're always channel focused. So really looking at even some help from, from TB, when we started reaching out to them, starting putting it in the Azure Stack Labs, in, a, in our lab side, having some of those, those initial challenges, there's, you, you always know that there's always help, right? So for us, really, the reason why we, we've done that is that we know for a fact that having that business aspect of it that's taken care of, it really helps that service providers. But at the same time, really what's happening here with your vir without the cloud infrastructure yet virtualization is there so you're looking at storage and compute so you can do all that but really what they did is they put in the networking aspects in there as well so that there's no more vlan creation manually there's no more all of that and it's really putting a hybrid cloud solution together and and some of those use cases 
could be is that there's still some customers, enterprise customers, that are still not quite ready. Not the fact that Azure is not ready, but basically the, the operating model and the pricing model at point. With Azure Stack Hub, you're able to actually, the, the licensing part is amazing for service providers because then you can actually help monetize as well. So you get the, your MSRP, but at the same time, you can actually make some ROI investments. If you do, I think two major things, it's if you do um, utilization efficiency, if you started bringing in um, customers in there and utilizing that capacity, but at the same time, how well it is managed on the labor efficiency side. So that's, that's the reason why uh, it, it provides a holistic solution to become hybrid. But at the same time, it, it actually makes it easier for us to look at Azure Stack Edge as well. So it's an edge core cloud type of strategy. And that's what we started building that platform inside. And, and some of the key highlights why we built that platform, and actually after talking to, to TB and the, and the guys there, is that there's some challenges for service providers when in regards to customer creation in Azure Stack connected mode. There's still some self PowerShell scripts there where we started putting a REST API wrapper around it so that it looks like you have a partner center where you can have that partner center integration while having that customer account creation efficiently. The oh, nice. point, sorry, go ahead. <laughs> No, no, that sounds very nice. I was dealing with that, and then I like it had this flashback, like uh, how important that actually is. So I really love that. But and go then, on. Sorry about that. Sorry, at the same time as well as we created, the, we started looking at meters, and I know Tibby was we we're whiteboarding some stuff there, and he's saying, you know what? I know you can look at reconciliation and partner center, but why don't you just use the Azure meters DB in there, the Azure Stack meters DB? So we actually implemented that quickly and, and knowing that, hey, we can provide some estimates, but at the same time, we can get all of those meters right away. Uh, with that, we put a pricing. So similar as if you're going to price it in Azure, we create it in our platform so that CSPs can price, price it and gain more um, margin plays in there. Right? So that really helps them with their bottom line. And with that, uh, basically, is that's where we provide the top level solutions for our customers. So we focus more on those. Okay, no, that's a very, again, coming from that field, working with, with service providers, this is really important uh, stuff. Um, so this is absolutely, I mean, there are many great reasons to use Azure Stack Hub and uh, I'm, I'm happy to make this decision. Um, to understand a little bit more, how are you now using the platform to actually like provide value to these customers and clients we were talking about? So for, for direct CSPs, uh, in this case, and, and their customers, it's really looking at that self-serve capability as well. But at the same time, it, it provides them a white label branded platform so that their digital presence is there. So you get the, the portal, you get your, your branded portal where your customers can go in. And it really provides three major things is that it accelerates your time to market with your branded platform. I think we all knew that already from the COVID days where some of the brick and mortars are starting to now race towards a, a digital presence that we didn't they didn't have before. So that's one. The second one is we put a managed service catalogs, what TV is mentioning. How do you now provide other values? So we're creating managed service catalogs in the platform so that people or CSPs can provide added value and create more revenue for them. Our main goal for that is to be sticky with the customers, increase your customer lifetime value. And the lastly, with their open uh, REST API capability, we're now putting a future proof, future proofing their business. So when then Azure Stack Edge comes along or Azure Arc or any other services, we can simply integrate that to the platform. No, that sounds fantastic. I also love what you said at the end here, uh, which I really like that it's not just about Azure Stack Hub, right? It's really about the different, the whole uh, ecosystem around it. Also with other Azure Stack um, products like Azure Stack Edge um, or like Azure in general, right? Where it really like drives this hybrid, hybrid approach. Um, when it comes to actually using the platform, 
Um, I, you managed a couple of things already, how, how you did some of the integration. Um, what kind of like platform features do you use uh, to actually like provide this to your customers? Yeah, that's a, that's a great question. So part of the, the modules that we have as well is that multi hybrid, multi cloud management platform so that you can bring in multiple different Azure Stack hubs into a single unified play. Um, we integrated with offerings, so base offers. You know those base offers where you have to actually put it and, 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 and spin it up to each of the Azure Stack regions. And there's a lot of challenges there because they're looking at, we, we've talked to some of these direct CSPs and we're saying, you know what, why don't you just put it as default? Just default, default. It's really looking at the capacity capability, capacity management, doing that quota for all those base offers. But at the same time, simplifying that if you have multiple Azure Stack hubs in one platform, you can manage your base offers and your quotas and then simply just push it into those systems. Uh, the second one is having that orchestration where you can provide you know, your VNet creation. So IAS is predominantly the services that's been uh, integrated. We are currently looking at, we finish our public cloud Azure AKS integration. So we're now diving into workloads and, and workflows. So two types that we've seen is that predominantly some of the customers that are, are doing the Azure Stack Hub, a lot of them is IAS. They're starting to dive into that Kubernetes AKS services. Uh, but it, again, it's coming into a challenge, right? Not a lot of people are well aware and exposed to, hey, what is Kubernetes? And how do you actually utilize that? Because there's such too much of a cross-functional unit that has to know those things. So, no, that's that's fantastic. Again, um, I I really like again the the play of this hybrid of the hybrid features that you can go that and you can also do as you said. For me, that's kind of like the traditional IS things, right? And then, but also looking at like more modern solutions with Kubernetes and bring that to life. I think that that's absolutely great. So obviously, I'm, I'm sure the viewers are already very interested in uh, in your solution and where they can actually find more. So I want to ask you, if if I'm interested in your solution or your company, uh, where can I find more? Sure. So currently, you can find it at www.itra.com. Um, we are currently, it's a placeholder. I know TB has been asking me um, to actually uh, look at that. When is that going to get updated? It's because we're still in the stealth mode uh, side of things. Um, we're trying to finish about four major um, journey with the partners and customers. But then um, you can find us there or we'll be happy to send some of our contact information. No, that's awesome. So again, if you're watching this video, first of all, you learned that pre uh, TB is great, uh, but you also learned it can sometimes be a little bit of a pain when it comes to for asks. Uh, again, check out the website. We will put all the links in the description of this video, so you will be fine uh, going out and learn more about the solutions. Uh, Dodi, I want to thank you very much for having you on the call today. Uh, it was a pleasure talking to you. Um, and to our viewers, uh, I hope I see you in the next one. Thanks, Thomas, and it's a pleasure to be here as well.